All right, we're on the other side of our lean-to now, and we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the other end. See, we're just gonna put a nail in here, right here, and this is where we want our floor from our barn to be out down to our lean-to. We wanna know where that is at all times, because that's what we're building off of our ground level. So we're gonna, get the, we're gonna get the square again, and we're gonna mark our finished floor. So we're pretty close to level there. I think we're good to go. All right, this is what you're shooting for right here. This is almost perfect level over a 24 foot span. Your finished floor here to the barn and there to the barn. Now, if that's not as level as mine though, don't get discouraged. As long as it's within, you know, as long as it's about, I'd say that bubble there is not too far over these lines. As long as that doesn't occur, you should be pretty good because don't don't forget too your concrete some people might have it going you know running off whatever mine's pretty level inside the barn because we were going to put floor drains so if you get that close over 24 foot that's basically level you're good to go so we're going to mark each one of these posts finished floor ff and then we're going to start on the barn side and we're going to go below the trusses and figure out where we want our slope and we're not doing that with a speed square you can you should but we're just going to kind of eye it up with our 412 pitch here off our truss and kind of get about close to the same off our lean to. Now this lean to that we added on here is we barely have any fall and that's what they call the runoff, the water, how the slope. That's your fall. How much fall? 412. Remember, four inches of rise over 12, uh, 12 inches over a foot. There's also four inches of fall over 12 inches. We're going off the existing six by sixes of the barn here. So we want a nice fall, even fall here. And plus we're going to just order the roofing so we could really use whatever we have. All right, more quick tips. If you forget your knife, I'm trying to cut my string. Find a nice sharp edge, just hammer it, in, cuts it right off. All right, so I think I figured out what height we're going to have on the end of the lean to. We're going to go eight foot up from finished floor. And I think that's where I want the top of my roof to sit. Um, we're going to go about 12 foot from the barn down to 8 foot. That's 4 foot of fall. That's more than enough for Pennsylvania. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark all the tops of these posts. From finished floor up 8 foot. That way we know where our roof's going. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right. So something else to think about while you're doing this kind of thing. We're going to be going up this ladder. Remember, we're going to come up 8 foot from finished floor. And that's where our roof's gonna set. But if you take a look at where I'm climbing, you got a digging bar, you got your level. You don't wanna fall off that ladder and have that, that, that stuff down there because you know, it wouldn't be pretty. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take this stuff and get it out of the way. Actually, don't even stand it up. Because if you fall, you don't want that in you. Our level's over here. Now look, if worst case scenario, we would fall, your landing ain't as, ain't as rough as having that, that digging board go. So just another tip I wanna share with you, things that I've learned along the way. All right, as you can see, we marked our roof everywhere. All right, that's our roof line. That's where we want our roof to end up. So the reason why we did this is because from this line up, we're gonna top all these. We're gonna cut them down because you can't have poles sticking through your roof. Obviously your roof will leak. So we're gonna top all these down where they need to be and then we'll be ready to put on um, our roof runners and, and our studs and everything. So our floor joists. And then we'll be ready for our floor joists. We'll be ready for our roof trusses. And floor joists, truss, stud, it's all the same. Right, our next step of what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our roof supports on the outside. What I mean by that, that's gonna be what's gonna be holding the support of the roof. Um, what we're gonna use is some two by tens laying here to do that. Now. I'm gonna bolt those onto those two by sixes up there, but you need as much support as you can get on these boards because you're gonna have a lot of weight sitting on them. So I'm gonna make these dog legs, they're about six inches by almost six inches to fit these posts right here. And what I'll do is I'll bolt on top of these. They'll, they'll be bolted so they'll be strong enough, but they're gonna also sit on these dog legs, giving it just a little bit extra. What we're gonna do on the barn side is gonna be a little different. All right, so what we're gonna do Kind of camera so you can see we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our dog legs from here 
down, our two by 10 is gonna sit from here to where the roof rests. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna bolt the two by 10, put the dog legs underneath of it. And that way we have extra support for our roof supports. Today, we're gonna go up here. We hung our uh, header boards on the barn. I guess you would call them roof supports. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna pre-drill with a 3 8 drill bit for my lag screws. I like to bolt everything, but there's just too much going on up there between the barn siding, the post, the furring strips, runners, pylons, whatever you want to call it, two by fours running in between, electrical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-drill a couple inches of three ace holes, and then we're gonna go in there with three ace lag screws, and then that way those are held up like that. On this end here, what I did in my other lean-to is I actually notched these two by sixes, and that way I could keep my header boards level. What we're gonna do in this case is we're actually going to uh have our header have our roof trusses sitting on top of our header board our far end and we're going to just raise back up our our inside board instead of cutting the notches i'm just going to try a different way just because i've never done it before i think it's going to be just as strong if not stronger because you're not notching out that board because the thing is is when you notch boards if you got a two by six and you notch out two inches what do you have now you only have two by four strength i want full two by six strength because unlike for where we have our stall area we're not gonna have beams running through this. This is gonna be a 16 foot span. So you're gonna have snow load and everything on it. So what I think I'm also gonna do on these inside roof trusses is we're gonna plate two two by sixes together on a few, making them four by sixes the way across 16 foot. That way the roof doesn't sag in the middle. If you ever see those barn sagging, we don't want any of that. So let's get to work and I'll show you finished product. We got right. our header boards bolted to the barn. Now what we're gonna do, start putting on our roof supports, roof trusses for our lean-to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on a ladder and I'm gonna mark on our header boards on the outside, header boards on the inside, every two feet or 16 inches, whatever we decide to do. Then I'm gonna mark the center of the board and go three quarters of an inch on each side and mark it down with our speed square. That way when we're both up on ladders, or if it's me, I know where to put my board and where to bolt it to. Hey, what's up guys? We're working on the lean-to for the barn here. Uh, it's been a while since I shot any footage. You guys won't know that till the video hits, but we wanna get back onto it. Here's the metal roofing I got. It's 28 gauge. We got it from a local lumber store. We're just gonna put an area out here and we're gonna store it. I gotta, I gotta run the runners on the lean-to yet still. Uh, just one thing I wanted to show you guys, if you don't have a trailer, like I have a 30 foot gooseneck and a few other trailers, if you don't have access to something like that, um, what works well is, remember, if you have an eight foot pickup truck bed, when you fold the gate down, that's 10 feet. Like my sheets are 16 foot, six inches long. I didn't want this metal going like this and, and bending in half. So all I did is when I went to the store, I bought two 16 foot two by sixes to take some of that, that flex off that metal roof. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this offloaded off the truck and we're gonna go back here and we're gonna get we're gonna get started again on this lane too. So stay tuned.
Now the two by sixes where the lean to is on top, we're gonna go underneath and build it like a standard house truss. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some boards on top of those two by sixes, you're gonna see. And then that way we have a little loft where we could store parts and electric fence parts and all sorts of things like that. And then we still need our two by eights for the outside fascia board because we're running our pylons, our runners on top of our lean to where our metal screws down. We're running those all the way out. And we got a two by six at the end. And then on top, we're putting an inch and a half two by four. So it's gonna measure out for a two by eight. It's gonna be a perfect fascia board. And then we can mount our gutter or put our fascia on or whatever you wanna do.
All right, this is kind of sad, but pretty neat. We're out here shooting this lean-to video, a neighbor stopped. So if you're in the Western Pennsylvania region, you've seen this dog, post a comment down below. He's a new neighbor. He moved from the city. He introduced himself. His name's Rick, great guy. I told him I'd uh, post it on my YouTube channel. Maybe somebody might see it. Thanks. Keep watching. <laughs> All right, now we just got our runners on our roof. We got them all done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out from side to side and make sure we did our metal roof right. And we got, uh, you know, 24 feet. They come in three foot sections. We should be able to lay eight down and get a nice even roof. If, it, if it's a little out of square, we're gonna have to adjust for that. And uh, after that, you'll see how we start putting the screws down in the metal roof, but this is it every two feet. You just screw these in every two feet, these two by fours, that's what your metal roof sits on. So, all right. And now all we got left to do, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a little sick right now. We got all the panels put on the metal roof, except for the last couple. And I think what we're gonna do is actually extend this out to the lean to too, and then we'll tie those two roofs in together. So I've been screwing it all down. Those panels are about every three feet. So one thing you need to do is I'm gonna show you how I've been lifting these panels up here and also how much I've been moving the ladder over. So if you got a three feet panel, this bottom ladder I'm climbing up on to lift the metal up on needs to be about four feet. Give yourself enough room. We tie it in the top, tie it in all the way down to the bottom. And then on the end, I put a few more extra screws. So this is the almost finished product. Then we're gonna build a loft and everything underneath. So you'll see. Another thing you want to try to do when you're lifting these panels up there like that, they all go left, there's a left and a right side. So when you, when you lay your pa pile, if you got two guys working on it or more, you want to make sure you're always putting the roof on the same way. You don't want a guy spinning around on you. Next thing you know, it ain't going to match up and you already got it on the roof. But that's what I do. I just lay them up on there, jump up on the ladder, and I pull them up and over. I screw the top. If it's a windy day and you only got one guy, I wouldn't even do it. It's pretty dangerous.
try to latch it in there too, and you can slide it up. You don't want to try to move the whole sheet on your to lock to your next channel. Another tip too, if you're working by yourself, you want to always screw in the top first, make sure your channel's locked in at the top of the roof, and then put one more screw down at the bottom to make sure your sheet's not moving on you when you're screwing down. That's huge because you don't want your roof to get off square. And when I was up there, I had in the back of my mind, that sheet and everything can slide down. So always plan your exit, your exit route. You don't want to slip, fall through the roof and get hurt by yourself. So that would slip. I had one hand on, I knew where I was landing, I knew what I was grabbing. So always be prepared for that. But yeah, if you just start off square, down here you measure off your overhang at where you want your roof. Don't forget to allow for your barn siding, your trim, anything you're putting on there, doors. So I allowed four and a half for mine because I'm putting an inch and a half plywood runner, one inch barn siding, that's two and a half, and then a piece of uh, three quarter round trim so that's almost three and a half, so another inch I at least want lip overhanging off that. My gutter, I'm allowing for a couple, I think three inch overhanging in my gutter, two or three inch. And then uh, on the last sheet, I might have to wait to get some help on that because that's a little dangerous. I could do it, but if it gets too sketchy, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait for help. So, all right, let me get back at it. I'm gonna take you up here and let you have a little bit better of a look at what I'm doing. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. All right, right here, I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm trying to get a different angle. All right, All right so right here is, is your lip. You got one of these humps right here. One of these humps and that's what overlaps the next hump so you put this hump put this hump over this one and you're going to screw down right here then you go in the middle in the middle and then on this last one you're going to screw it right here and this is where your next piece is going to overlap so the rain can't get up and over and that's how this roofing works if you put a screw here going to keep lifted up because of the screw so i put as close as i can to hold this tight and then on the next one i put it i put it as close as i can to this to hold that tight 
that's it it's pretty easy to put this metal roof on you guys be the judge metal or shingles yes or no i like metal over shingles so that's what we're putting on it it's quicker it's easier for me you don't need as many guys if you ask me let's get back down here and put you guys back up on the hay wagon i'm gonna finish screwing down this sheet <clears throat> Yeah. 